What's up, lovely folks, followers of the divine Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai, all those searching, all those wondering, uh, you know, who is the creator? What is the purpose for you? Um, I would say check out the book of Enoch. It'll give you a lot of depth, a lot of insight into what was happening in the book of Genesis. Long story short, I believe the book of Genesis, um, this book of Enoch, a lot of those older books, they give us a good picture of what was happening then so that we can understand what's happening now because there's nothing new under the sun, as the scripture says. Uh, what was happening was that there were uh, evil uh, fallen angels that had uh, babies with women and they created Nephilim. Now, these power structures, these people created um, a system over people to which uh, there was so much mixture and witchcraft and hybridization um, and a control over people that it, it all needed to be washed away. So we have the book uh, of Noah. We have the story of Noah actually for you know telling us that. Um, but this is a good in-depth understanding of what would happen right before that. So the book of Enoch, should you read it? I think so. Uh, check out chapter 62. Um, you can find it anywhere on the internet. It's actually referencing, uh, or these scriptures are referencing the book of Enoch. So Revelation 19.15, Matthew 19.28, uh, Psalm 48.6, Isaiah 49, Psalm 2.10, Psalm 78, Revelation 7.14, Jeremiah 46.10. And, and those are just a few of the scriptures that are referencing the actual book of Enoch. So the first and second book of Enoch is what I would recommend. The third book, I believe, is Tainted. This is a version I have. Uh, it's called the book uh, uh, in secrets of Enoch, Hebrew and English on uh, the Bible of the patriarchs. So check it out. It's on Amazon, but you can get it on sacredtext.com, the actual, um, book of Enoch. Um, it won't have all the references like this, but it's still a good start. And I think what most people will find is that the Bible itself if you look at the different versions, if you understand your history and the traditions, you'll start to see that there are ins inconsistencies. For instance, the Geneva Bible was actually created in 1560. The King James Bible didn't come around until 1611. That was actually not a translation. It was actually just a copy. The New Testament of the King James Version is just a copy of William Tyndale's New Testament Version. So why the different versions? I believe the King James Version was put in place because uh, the guy himself, King James, was not an actual nice guy. And he didn't want certain parts of the Bible getting out. Now, you uh, look at earlier times like the Counts of Nicaea. Um, it was said that they actually omitted about 20 or so books out of that Bible or out of the works of the Bible at, that they had at the time because uh, they didn't understand or they didn't think that the layman would understand it and that some of it was too mystical. Um, and so they just omitted it. Now, I have my reservations about that, but the facts are the facts. Um, the Bible, the, the Geneva Bible, uh, was actually the one that uh, King James was reading and a lot of other contemporaries. William Shakespeare was reading the Geneva Bible. That's the Bible that actually made it to America when the pilgrims came here. So why the difference? I believe that just as it was in the times of Noah, just as it was in the times of Enoch, there were people that were corrupting others. There were people that were using religion and using uh, witchcraft and using control over people uh, to make sure that they stayed where they wanted them to be, which is subjugated. Uh, you look at chapter one, verse two, book of Enoch. It says he took up his parable and he said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by the hand of Yahuwah, and he prophesied the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood it as I saw. And not for this generation before, a generation far off is to come. I believe that's us. But either way, he was speaking of a later generation that would need to understand that there are things happening on the earth then that were, are happening now. As the Bible says, you know, there were giants on the earth then, there were giants thereafter. There was corruption and there was corruption now. Um, so I'll say read it with open eyes, ask the Holy Spirit for discernment, and understand that I believe the Lord always wants us to understand that Jesus is the center of everything. Um, Jesus is the one that allows us um, to break free from the matrix. Jesus is the one that allows us to come out of a place of complacency, to live in love, to live in freedom. And ultimately, I think every book like this um, will give us a picture of that. The Apocrypha itself, um, it just means that there were texts that were not to be read in a public context. But all the church fathers, including Tertullian, Origen, Justice, the, Justin the Martyr, a lot of those 
old fathers, they read the book of Enoch. Um, and also you understand, you look at the New Testament, Jesus is quoting the book of Enoch. A lot of the brothers that are writing the New Testament are quoting the book of Enoch. So I say, give it a read, check it out, have open eyes and understand that, um, you know, we're being awakened right now. And I believe that this might be a part of it for some of you guys. So peace, God bless. Um, and, you know, and be awakened, be enlivened, be encouraged and be hopeful. These are interesting times that are ahead. Um, it's, it's a time of revival. It's a time of restoration. So, um, you know, push on, keep discovering, uh, keep ascending and keep understanding what your call is um, from Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. God bless.